God is Dinanath, the savior of the destitutes. He says, I am Adham Udharanhar. Pripaluji Maharaj asked a question. He said, when God is Dinanath, Deen Bandhu, and we souls are in Maya since endless lifetimes, we are fallen. Then why has God not bestowed that grace upon us? The pathways to God realization are described as three in the scriptures. One is karma, the second is gyan, and the third is bhakti. Karma refers to karma kand, the rituals. These rituals described in the scriptures are so complex, they are practically impossible to follow in this age of Kali. Deshe Kale Upayena Dravyam Shraddha Samanvitam Patre Pradiyate Yattat Sakalam Dharma Lakshanam the scriptures state that any karmakand requires six upkarana, six items to be fulfilled. The place should be perfect. The muhurt time should be perfect. The mantra recitation should be perfect. The material use should be perfect. The person getting it done should have the proper intention and so also the person doing it. The Vedas are saying, in this Kali Yuga, Karma Dharma is practically impossible to follow. In the age of Dwapar, when Dashradji Maharaj wanted to do Putreshti Yagya, there was only one Brahman in the whole planet Earth who was familiar with its procedures. So Vasishji did not do it. He asked Shringi Rishi to come. Shringi Rishi Vasishta Bulava Putra Kam Shubha Yagya Karava So the path of Karm or the path of rituals is extremely complex. The second is the path of Gyan. This path is even more difficult. Gyan ke panth kripan ki dhara parat khages ho hi nahi bara. To walk on the path of Gyan is like walking on the edge of a sword. What will happen when you walk on the edge of a sword? You lift one foot and the other gets cut. Lift the other foot and the first gets cut. So also is Jnana Yoga. Because as per Jnana Yoga, this world does not exist. We are utilizing the world, but you are supposed to think it doesn't exist. If you read the Yoga Vasisht, that is what it is all about. The world is Mithya, it is non-existent. In that case, the scriptures also don't exist. And there is no difference between me and Guru. So it is such a confusing perspective for an ordinary mortal it is Klesh Prad. That is what Lord Krishna told Arjun. Arjun, this path of stopping your mind from thinking, of meditating on the formless light, is Klesh Prad for one who is embodied. You are embodied, you have a body, and you want to meditate on the Lord without any body of His. It's very difficult, Arjun. It's not impossible, 
but full of challenges and the path of bhakti is a simple path in this path of bhakti you want to sing you sing the glories of god you want to dance you dance to his kirtans you want to read you read about his pastimes you want to celebrate festivals celebrate diwali and ram navmi etc so you dovetail everything to god that is why it is called easy so this easy path is the one for us all now what to do if somebody finds bhakti also difficult why because it's easy to say it and difficult to do it why because bhakti means to serve bharat ji maharaj was a bhakt of ram so when bharat was walking to go and meet ram in the forest the ayodhya vasi told bharat why don't you sit on the chariot you are now the yuvraj of ayodhya the crown prince so sit on the chariot and go bharat said sit on the chariot you know what is my dharma sir bal chalau uchit asmora sab te sevak dharma kathora the dharma of a sevak is where the master's feet have fallen my head should fall so ram walked barefoot out here and i sit on a chariot i should walk on my head out here how can anybody walk on the head that is why this bhakti is also easy to say and difficult to do so what should somebody do if they find bhakti also difficult is there a fourth path you see the fourth path is humbleness just become humble why because god is dinanath the savior of the destitutes he says i am adham udharanhar the rescuer of the fallen souls so in this path all you need to do is to consider yourself as fallen to bring actual humbleness i am insignificant kripalu ji maharaj asked a question he said when god is dinanath din bandhu the friend of the fallen and we souls are in maya since endless lifetimes we are fallen then why has god not bestowed that grace upon us the answer to this question is twofold firstly we have never considered ourselves as fallen and secondly we have never considered god as the savior of the fallen all we need to know is to empty ourselves of pride so in this path there is nothing to do become humble in the narad bhakti darshan narad ji says ishwarasya abhimana dveshitvat dainya priyatvat god hates one thing and loves another thing now narad ji's statement contradicts his ist dev lord krishna's statement because lord krishna said in the gita samoham sarvabhuteshu name dveshyosti na priya i am equitable towards all 
neither do i have any friends nor i have any enemies nor do i put partially love someone nor do i hate someone i mean dwesh dwesh means hate priya nor am i partial to someone so god is equitable and makes sense because he is our father so the father if you the children ask papa do you love me more or do you love my sister more and papa says look beta we have five fingers in the hand now we love all five of them isn't it likewise i love all of you so our eternal father also says that you are all my children so god says i don't have any partiality any hatred but narad ji says ishwarasya abhiman dveshatvat dainya priyatva cha god hates one thing what is that the pride in our hearts and he loves another thing the humble spirit see even the bible says blessed are those who are poor in spirit for they shall inherit the earth all the religious traditions of the world have recognized that the biggest enemy of spiritual progress is pride this pride this aham bhav the day it goes god realization will be ours saint kabir put it so well he said as long as i had pride in my heart god was not there jab mai tha mai is the sense of self jab mai tha tab hari nahi god was not there ab hari hai main nahi na god resides and i don't prem gali ati sankari yame dwain samahi the street of divine love is very narrow two personalities will not reside in it either you keep your lord or you keep your pride So what is the problem in receiving grace it is the pride that blocks it this pride is there now you ask yourself do i have any pride ask yourself what answer do you get no swami ji i don't have any special pride but the point is with what did you ask yourself with your intellect and the pride is sitting in that intellect so the intellect cannot spot its own defect the intellect will give you the decision that i have got no pride but the scriptures tell us the guru knows that if there was no pride you would have become god realized so don't ask your intellect ask the scriptures once akbar and birbal you know these stories of akbar and birbal so akbar was the mohammedan king of delhi at that time and he went out on his elephant into the town birbal was on the side whereas standing by the wall of lal kila was a drunkard he had taken one too many he looked at badshah and he said kyon be haathi bechega hey you will you sell me your elephant i imagine the insolence of it in those days the king had so much of power and this guy in an urchin's dress is saying will you sell me your elephant akbar boiled over with rage and he said let this man be presented in my court now and that man's 
इंटॉक्सिकेशन केम डाउन ही रियलाइज ही हैड मेड अ फेटल मिस्टेक द किंग ऑल ही नीड्स टू दस लेट हिम बी हैंगड एंड गॉन सो ही वेंट एंड फेल एट बीरबल्स फीट बिकॉज इट वॉज वेल नोन दैट बीरबल इज सो वाइज ही सेड ओ मिनिस्टर यू नीड टू सेव मी नाउ बीरबल टोल्ड हिम दे इज अ लिटिल ट्रिक so the next day he was brought to akbar's court akbar said did you ask from me to sell my elephant to you he said badshah salamat i said no such thing i have no need for elephants and even if i need elephants i don't have money to buy elephants and if i did have money to buy i would not buy from you i'd go from the market and buy it akbar said you are speaking reasonably today what happened to you yesterday if it was not you then who was it who asked me to sell the elephant that person said huzur i know that gentleman and you give me 24 hours time i will present him in your court akbar said so be it 24 hours later that man came with his bottle and he put it in front of akbar akbar said what insolence is this he said huzur it was the bottle what do you mean i am mean here at that time i was intoxicated so my intellect was inebriated the alcohol had destroyed my intellect now when that has gone away i am back to my senses Akbar laughed and said all right go likewise the pride is sitting in our intellect and if we ask ourselves the answer will get us yes i am very humble but the fact is it is this pride that is the biggest defect of the material realm where does it come from it is the first contact point between the soul and maya the pride makes us think i am this body i am the mind i am the intellect so the pride is making us identify with this false me and false mind this pride is the cause of all kinds of conflicts in the world there's a book what they don't teach you at harvard business school it's a book of street smarts i read it when i was in business school what they don't teach you at harvard business school so one statement i liked very much from that book it says you know most corporate executives are big balls of ego with hands and feet sticking out keep this reality in mind but that is a fact all of us have this huge ego inside us and the path of spirituality is the very reverse so this ego is coming out of misidentification this is mine this is mine this is mine now one mouse found a 100 dollar bill 100 dollars for a mouse that's big money so it sat down on the bill the mouse was in the jungle an elephant came walking by so elephant did not notice the mouse because elephants are huge creatures the mouse was insignificant so the elephant very nonchalantly placed its leg over the mouse and walked off the mouse looked at the elephant in anger huh? didn't you notice i am sitting on a 100 dollars now you'll say the mouse was crazy but all of us are crazy like that whatever little we have we identify with this 
this is mine, this is mine, that is mine. And besides that, we identify with our titles, our positions. I am so and so, I am like this, I am like that. I am beautiful, I am handsome, I am intelligent, I am a scholar, I am a Swamiji. <laughs> all these identifications, they are all false identifications. Once one person went to attend the Rath Yatra. So you know Lord Jagannath when he comes to the Bordand, the big street, it's a three kilometer, two mile long street, extremely wide, probably 30 meters of wide or something. And then he goes there. So now, of course, it's getting covered on television, but 30 years ago, it, there was no live coverage. So on the day of Rath Yatra, over a million people would fill up the street. So what a sight it used to be. So they would all see Jagannath Ji from far and they are doing Dandavat. So prostrate obeisance, that is called Dandavat. With all their devotion, villagers come from here and there. We want to participate. And from far, they lie down flat on the floor. And one dog happened to walk in front of the rath, the chariot. And the dog saw this guy is doing pranam, that guy is doing pranam, that guy is... He said, you know, I must be something. They are doing pranam to me. That is the pride of the dog. The dog doesn't realize there is Lord Jagannath behind. They are all doing pranam to Lord. Similarly, we may think I am like this, I am like that. But we don't realize all these qualities are bestowed by someone. And they can also be snatched away. But whatever one may have, the pride is quick to come. Yauvanam dhana sampatte prabhutva mamivekita ekaikam napyanarthaya kimuyatra chatushtayam. If somebody is young, if somebody is powerful, if somebody is rich, etc., etc., it's very difficult not to be proud. That is why it is said, Prapte tu shodashe varshe gardhavi chapsarayat. At the age of 16, the gadhi, the gadhi is the female horse, the gadhi. Even she thinks I am an apsara. The age is such, the age is intoxicating. One Gandharva, celestial angel, came and gave darshan to a lady. So you know the vanity of ladies. Gents have their own vanity, ladies have their own vanity. So the Gandharva said, ask for a boon. And she realized, oh, so she said, what should I ask? So the Gandharva prompted, should I make you beautiful? She slapped him. You mean I am not beautiful? <laughs> now you laugh, but this is the pride of all of us in some way or the other. And this is what we need to target. So if you remember the Yoga Sutras, Maharshi Patanjali says, practice the reverse thinking. If you wish, if you can, first of all, recognize the pride as the enemy. And second, realize, I wish to get rid of it. Because only then I'll be a recipient of grace. If you say, okay, I wish to keep pride and I also wish to keep God. No hope. The gopis made this mistake. When the Maharaj started, the gopis were at such a high level. The Lord Krishna was dancing with them. God is dancing with them. Imagine what privilege. 
But then the gopis mis- made a mistake. They were looking at Krishna and suddenly they started looking at themselves. I must be special, that's why he's dancing with me. And the moment they looked at themselves, the sight from Krishna, the consciousness shifted. Jab mein tha, tab hari nahi. Ab mein has come. So Hari went. Shri Krishna disappeared. So, we now have to do the Pratipaksh Bhavanam, as Maharshi Patanjali says. First of all, recognize the devil, that pride within you. Second, aspire to get rid of it. And third, to replace it by practicing humbleness. The moment we think we have pride, it is a sure shot indication that we have forgotten God. See, the firefly can be proud at night. It's very glorious at night. You seen fireflies at night? Wow! But when the sun rises, can the firefly be proud? Its pride is only in the absence of the sun. Likewise, when we forget God, we can say, Oh, you know, I made a double-storied house. But if you remember, God made the whole world and much more. Then you say, what is there to be proud about? So, replace it with thoughts of humbleness. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu He made this the basis of his philosophy. He said that look, Trinadapi sunichena tarorapi sahishnuna. Consider yourself more insignificant than a blade of grass. Don't tell others, I'm more insignificant than a blade of grass. That is false humility. From inside, you consider yourself more insignificant than a blade of grass. And be extremely tolerant. Don't seek amanina manadena. Don't seek prestige for yourself. Give all respect to others. In this state, Kirtaniya Sadari Always chant the glories of God. So that critical point must be prioritized in our spiritual practice and must be the focus as the culprit. So Kripaluji Maharaj says with humbleness, see yourself as fallen and then pray to the Lord, you are the rescuer of the fallen, my Lord. Now please grace me. And this is the fourth path. Actually, it is not the fourth path. I duped you all. It is the third path, the basis of bhakti itself, but just to put it as a wake-up call, I mentioned it as a fourth. But the fact is that humbleness itself is the foundation of all bhakti. The Radha Krishna Temple Allen invites you to a week-long spiritual journey as we present the Life Transformational Series based on the science of happiness by Swami Mukundanan, an IIT and IIM alumnus and Amazon's best-selling author of a profoundly inspiring line of books like The Power of Thoughts, Science of Mind Management, Bhagavad Gita and more. The seven-day complimentary offering includes in-person yoga, meditation, kirtans, refreshing morning walks and structured lectures based on Vedic scriptures for a happier and healthier you, all in the presence of Swami Mukundanan. So what are we waiting for? Mark your calendars today from August 20th through August 26th. For more details on this wonderful program, visit radhakrishnatemple.net to register.